You're a guy who's done it all, done and seen it all. High carb, keto, OFM, esters, and and you know, bike racing is one of those things that has extreme levels of demand. It it requires endurance. It requires high level. It requires sub threshold, threshold, super th- threshold. Um, the strategies. I mean, the strategies. I mean, it's it's. I don't understand it. I just know it's there, mm-hmm. right? So it's one of the. It's one of. The, I can see why it's one of the um, biggest sports. It's all. It's sort of. Like, it, it's sort of. Like, I wouldn't say it's like golf because it's totally different. But you know how golf is never. You, you know, it's never something you can get the formula down. It's yeah. the same thing with bike racing. I but know, bike I, racing. I know three or four different plans. One plan, a backup plan, and another plan, and never use any of them. <laughs> right. Right, right, right. So bicycle racing has this uh, huge spectrum of, 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 of dynamic requirements, right? Yeah. And so what we've got, and I, I you talk about this, is, is we've got this interesting situation right now where you have, and you're right, you're the perfect exa- guy to talk about because you're, you got the high carb camp who's pushing even, you know, carb carb levels for fueling for bike racing that are just, literally the sky's the limit right you know people are pushing over 140 grams an hour now and and they're talking about this in all kinds of endurance sports you know these these 90 to 140 grams plus fueling rates and nobody wants to talk about what it's doing to their bodies in terms of the downside factors at that level and then you got the keto camp that wants to talk about all the benefits that the sugar camp doesn't want to talk about, but they don't want to talk about the fact that you you go keto, you're putting your you're you're putting down the governor in low gear, and that's all you that's all where you're going to sit. I feel, I feel like the fat metabolism thing was gaining traction so fast, and they doubled down. <laughs> they doubled yep. down with these carbs. Because there was a movement where I shared with you, even my friend who's Carmichael training system, vegetarian, high carb, he started wearing the glucose monitor and started doing fasting and trying to incorporate more fats. And that was one, that lasted for a year or so. And then it was like, it got swept under the rug with this high carb thing. Yeah. Which, which I'm still, I'm still questioning. I mean, we've, I've been in the, the game for so long and nutrition side of it with, with BMX racing and pure anaerobic 30 second sprints. And back in 2000s, we were pushing high carbs. And really, has it changed that much that you're seeing records being broken all of a sudden, records that have stood for 40 years? I don't know. I, I'm, I don't necessarily think it's all this new. Everyone I ride with, oh, yeah, it's all about their new nutrition program. It hasn't changed that much. They're telling you they're pushing a higher dosage, but people have been pushing pretty high dosage for a long time. Yeah, they have, but the the formulas for getting them in have, have improved. I mean, I've seen, you know, these hydrogels, they're putting a lot more sodium in with the, with the carb mixes. People aren't afraid of sodium as they were back in 2000. Yeah. Uh, that's a huge factor. Right, the osmotic potential, getting the osmotic potential right. So I think that there have been significant refinements, but it's not the it's not obvious. That aside, for the regular man, you know, for the regular guy like you, as a top age grouper or anybody else who's riding and wants to be both um, perform well and have that clip, you know, that that ability to break. Um, this is kind of one of the things I want to discuss with you as a as a guy who does both competitive road racing. Yeah. So you're 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 riding at a high level, and and yeah. so you don't you know just kind of give us a rundown because you you know you have other other reasons to be staying fit. So so health is a priority. It's like for you, it's life or death. Yeah, and you're still able to race competitively. Yeah, so we 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 just went on a rant on, on how high these people are fueling with these carbs and what it could potentially do. And I think, I think the market that we we both are in is these people that find this sport 
either ultra running or cycling later in life. But they need a hobby. They need to get better health. And we want to show them the way to do it the right way and not get in the same situation that I was in. And that's what I'm trying to do today is look, here I was in 2015. Here I was in 2019 with heart failure. Here I am today with some of the best health I can have. And, and best all- performance. Yeah, and and the best performance I've had in my life. My numbers are better than they've ever been. And recovery, I told you I didn't sleep. I sleep. It's amazing how good I sleep now. And I, could it be part of my health just getting better and better and better? I think there's one, that was a greater part of it. And then I think moving out to the middle of nowhere and getting away from all the 5G and wireless and all that was, helped oh. a lot. Absolutely, non-native EMF. It, there's all these incremental things that, that we we identify in the OFM program, and it's non-native EMF. It's managing your chronic stressors of the modern world. If you're living out in the country and you're getting up and doing chores and getting that morning sunlight to to get set your circadian rhythm, get you that UV light, um, which is really important for the dawn effect, right? To to mitigate that dawn effect. One of the things I saw early on when I made this my day job was it was clear to me anything below 50 suboptimal you need 50 and above you need to get lots of sun mm-hmm. the ocean the sunlight all that vitamin d because your the sun on your skin makes i think when Ho- michael Hollick says they suspect there's at least 10 to 15 other compounds that are synergistic with vitamin d that are made by naturally by sun but you know a lot of people can't do that so the the most effective way was to dose with vitamin d3 mega dose to get it above but we saw that clearly people wouldn't have the fat adaptation results uh, you know performance results if they didn't have their vitamin d up it just would not happen 